Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Greatness Engineering Hour show. This is Mireille, Mireille Tulekima, all the way from Australia, in Perth, in Western Australia. And uh, yes, you know me as the Greatness Engineer, and just like as usual, I'm going to bring you, you know, an amazing guest. But this time, it's even more than usual. I'm bringing you a legend that is going to have, you know, a great conversation with us. We will get to understand his legendary journey and, uh, and really have the opportunity to be inspired and build on the lessons that go, and all the nuggets that are going to be shared today. So uh, you probably seen, you know, the poster going around on, you know, on, on social media and on the different platform where, you know, I do my marketing. Today, I'm actually bringing you uh, all the way from New Jersey. John Blassingham is one of the most celebrated fashion producers in the US, and he is also one of the most respected magazine publisher in the business. And um, the the the, the 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 great thing with John, he actually started from you know really the bottom and learned you know uh, all the way to become one of the be the most respected you know uh, person in the in the fashion industry, but also in the media industry. So I'm not gonna you know tell you all the story. I'm gonna make sure he comes and tell his own story. But uh, I, I will ask you to, you know, let us know if you're watching live, let us know where you're watching from and uh, don't hesitate to ask any question or, you know, just, you know, give your point of view as, you know, this conversation is going along and uh, make it, you know, let us, you know, participate to make it a great uh, hour of greatness. And uh, so just, you know, sit tight have something to write on because I think we're going to learn so much uh, uh, from John today. Uh, so I encourage you to have some a paper or you know a, a, a notebook and a pen to write everything down, and hopefully after that you know implement some of the the you know some of the nuggets that are going to be shared, implement in your life and share share with you know people in your in your in your community with people that you love and with people that you really want to see grow so don't go anywhere we are starting and i'm going to bring john in now Another episode of the Greatness Engineering Hour show, the show that is brought to you by the Virai Telekima Global Leadership Organization. What feel is important is if you just look at the word compassion, when mm -hmm. it's behavior, it's something that can be learned and it is something that we can embody through habits and through our daily actions. To get this idea that if we interject this wisdom intentionally, mm -hmm. uh, it is, it, I call them needle movers. It's the needle mover that's missing. Mm -hmm. Um, don't deprive the world of your greatness. Mm -hmm. Don't do that anymore. You know, dare to excel, dare to be sexy, dare to be you, dare to be the best version of yourself. Uh, impact yourself positively and from, from there impact others and you are not alone.
So welcome, John. Welcome to the Greatness Engineering Hour show. I'm excited. I'm just, you know, start trying to calm down, but I'm really excited <laughs> to have you on the Greatness Engineering Hour show and to learn from such a legend, uh, you know, like you. And but before I get to, you know, to the peak of the excitement, I just want you because I've introduced you uh, briefly, but I really want you to introduce yourself. Let us know you know, let the audience know who you are and uh, what is, you know, what are the key important things we need to know about you? Well, number one, I'm a man of God. I believe in, uh, you know, the divine power. Every day when I wake up, I give God the glory for another day. Now it's up to me once he gives it to me to move forward in a positive way. And that's what I try to do each and every day. Uh, I've been in the industry 43 years, started out with Hearst magazines, Cosmo, Good House, Harper's Bazaar, one of the first blacks that they hired. Uh, from there, I worked on the uh, other side, the wholesale side of it with a company called Hudson News Company. Uh, these newsstands that you see in uh, the airports, etc. those Hudson newsstands, the uh, Bobby, uh, Jimmy Cohen, uh, who was the owner of those, what was the owner of me, sold it, uh, sold it to another conglomerate year, a few years ago. All right. I worked with them in their distribution and to the retailers. So uh, I say that to let you know that I was learning every step of the way to, uh, how to move forward in the system and uh, in, in this uh, system that they had set up where we were not involved in it. Uh, you know, um, in other words, you had publications like um, the Cosmo, Harper's Bazaar, Town and Country, Sports of Field, uh, you know, and, and, and other uh, publications that, control, that were controlled, okay? But you had no, no uh, Afro-American publication for us to read and what have you. So we had to read what they gave us until, uh, of course, Mr. Johnson came mm -hmm. out a few years back with Negro Digest, which again, they did not allow him to be distributed. So Mr. Johnson had to find another way to get distribution. So the way he did, what, or what he did was he used the black newspapers to put out his publication Okay, so uh, that just gives you an idea of what you were, we were going through with uh, regard to trying to get information on, on our culture and our community out, all right? Then, uh, so eventually, eventually, as I said, I went and I worked in the industry to learn I knew what I had to do and knew who I was in that industry. And, and I, I worked in that industry for about uh, 15, 20 years, working for other publications, other national distributors to learn my way. And from then on, and then from then on, I, uh, after learning my way in 1985, I, um, I, I became my, I, my own boss because I started my own consultant company for publications. And I also was the founder of, um, and publisher of three publications, which was uh, internationally distributed called, one was called High Pair, the other was called uh, today's Black Woman, which became TBW Style Report, and, and the other was called Black Men's Magazine. So for a long time, these publications were out and, dist and uh, were distributed internationally, okay? Uh, just to give you a little idea mm -hmm. on my, tr my journey, after working with the Hudson News, I worked with a company called All America Distributors. All America Distributors 
was a uh, a company out on the West Coast that handled uh, a few black publications, and the first black publication that was compared to Playboy, it was called um, Players Magazine. Uh, and I was their East Coast representative, mm -hmm. along with, they had a book line, okay, called Holloway House Books, which was a book line with uh, Black Experience, it's called the Black Experience line, which uh, they, they had Donald Goins, Bob Beck, Radcliffe series. They, they were not in, in the F.W. Woolworth McCory's stores. So when I took on that uh, challenge, I call it, to work with this uh, Jewish gentleman, his name was Bentley Morris, to distribute these on the East Coast because he made me the East Coast manager I got this into the F.W. Woolworth stores and McCrory stores. Uh, they went from, uh, I, 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 at that time, was about a million and a half gross billing to about $15 million gross billing. And that was because of my efforts to get these books into these stores and, and get the magazines distributed by the wholesalers across the country, all right? So I learned and I work, but I also knew that I was working for someone else, not for myself, okay? And as I said, mm -hmm. uh, the next, my next, my next uh, uh, challenge, and I can say, you know, challenge as far as my career, was there was a company in Canada called Distacor. Distacor was a national distributor mm. up in Canada, and they uh, they had a, a, a title called Hockey News. It was one of their titles, and a few other small titles. Mm -hmm. And they saw the the work that I was doing with this distribution. And, and uh, you know, hey, first black guy, you know, he's getting a name for himself. Maybe we can use him to break into the industry and in the, into the U.S. market. So they came to me. And at that time, I guess I was in my uh, early 30s, mid, early to mid 30s. Okay, and they came to me and they said, Mr. John, we'd like to use, to, for, to use your services to increase our visibility in the U.S. market. Okay, we, we're going to make you the U.S. circulation manager. If we increase and get to the point where we, we're go, going to open up a U.S. office, Okay, you will be the VP in charge of the U.S. Worked hard for three years for this company. Okay, built their, their, their gross billing up. All right. They open, opened up an office in the U.S. They did that. In the, a, a, in the Gray Bar building on 42nd and Lexington Avenue. But the only thing they did not do was make me the vice president. They brought a gentleman mm -hmm. in from London, England. His name was Tony Barshow. Still remember the name. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, John, you're still young and uh, we, we appreciate everything you did. But Tony Barshow was the vice president. I worked under mm -hmm. him. At that time, I said, OK. I can't get excited, but I, you know, I can go ahead and get even. At that time, I broke out and started my own newsstand consultant company called New Day Associates. New Day, mm -hmm. okay? And I told the publishers that I brought into Distacor, I was leaving. And they told me, John, there was about eight, eight publications that, John, if you leave, we're coming with you. And I, mm -hmm. I said, that's your choice. I said, you know, I will, I will yeah. take you on. And that's when I, again, I took these eight publications. I started the, my own consultant company. 
I was working with uh, the um, producing producing these production uh, the production company uh, because I had in 1976 started a uh, company uh, a a um, fashion show for a publication called Us Quarterly. Uh, my guy Dwayne Love Dwayne Love out of Detroit, Michigan had a magazine. He was a mm-hmm. a, a a stylist and a hair and he had his own salon, etc. All right. And he asked me, how can I start a, and promote this new publication I had? I told Dwayne, I said, Dwayne, here's what we'll do. We'll have a ma- a major fashion event, but mm-hmm. we'll invite uh, folks, young folks that are trying to break into the industry, but beside them, we'll invite people that are well-known, fashion people that are well-known in the industry. I had my co- cousin, Jennifer Bryce, who's one of the top models, Peggy Dillard, and some of the top models at that time come out, and, and Jennifer produced the show. We invited young models that are trying to break into the industry to produ- uh, to be a part of the show. We had one of the top uh, makeup artists at that time named Quiet Fire uh, to, to, to do the makeup. We It was a tremendous, tremendous event. We invited Essence over. Uh, we invited uh, people from Ebony over. This was the great networking event. Okay, of course, mm-hmm. I'm sorry to say that uh, us quarterly did not survive in that industry, in the industry, but people who saw the show, who was a part of the show, said, John, you have to do this. You have to mm-hmm. continue to move forward with this show. So since 1976, up into 2020, 21, when we had COVID, I never stopped doing three shows a year. When we had wow. COVID, I stopped because of the fact that we could not invite, you know, they, they, they mm-hmm. Marriott, which then I'd been doing 29 years to show that the Marriott, I could not do the show. And I, I, got, I got back in 2020, at the end of 2021, 22, to start doing the shows again. And we've been continuously mm-hmm. doing these events and carrying on ever since. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's been my legacy. That's been my story. Uh, I've always been there for young folks, designers, makeup, hair people, okay, music people. I've worked with a gentleman of course, um, uh, who uh, produce the Oscars, uh, Mr. Will Packer. Mm-hmm. Will Packer had his first movie called Menage a Trois. Okay, um, Bernard, uh, Mr. Barner, Bernard Bronner, uh, financed it. I helped promote the movie. Will has been coming mm-hmm. to my shows. Uh, he's been at my events. Uh, he's supported some of the events that I do. Um, I've helped him. I put him on the cover of a few of the magazines that I produced. I've worked with him on certain things that he asked me to help him out with. All right. And, um, you know, we've been good friends over the years. Of course, Mm -hmm. since he's been the big, since he produced, uh, Straight Outta Compton, Ride Alone, um, and and a host of other uh, movies, he's become a big guy now. So mm-hmm. I don't see him mm-hmm. as much as I used to. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine, and that's you know that's that's sometimes the problem. And you know, listening to you, I'm like, wow! How do you sustain you know such a, a level of commitment? especially with all the challenges that, you know, you had to go through people just, you know, not honoring, you know, their contracts or not really honoring their words. 
and you know having to mm. start all over again and 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 really get going so what do you think have been really uh helping you keep going you know and having this strong resilience because even now you are still going you're not still stopping coming. i mean only covid <laughs> made, made you stop but you you keep going so what is the secret motivation inspiration god's w and knowing that i'm a child of god and that mm -hmm. you know when i wake up in the morning as i said earlier the first thing i do is give the glory okay mm -hmm. and i know that god has a purpose for me being here okay that's my motivation living a purpose driven mm -hmm. life knowing that only the only one can hurt you is you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay the only one can stop you is you okay when when i go after something yeah. well anything uh, i do mm -hmm. i put God first and my inspiration and motivation to succeed next. I don't let anything stop me but me. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Think about that. Mm -hmm. If you start if you think that mm -hmm. you're gonna fail, guess what? You're gonna fail. If you say only one can make me or the only one can fail and make me fail is me by my thoughts alone. Okay. If I think I'm going to fail, guess mm -hmm. what? I'm going to fail because I put it into, into the either into space that I am going to fail. Okay. That's what's going to happen to me. But when I say mm -hmm. can't nothing stop me, but me, If I fail as me, nobody else but me. If I succeed, if I win, it's me. Because that's the way I'm thinking to win. That's mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really about you know the the mindset at the end. You know, exactly. it's really about the mindset. And and I really relate to what you just said. Is that you know if I fail, it's me because when you know because I, i was mentioning to you uh you know before we went on stage that you know i was one of the first you know uh, uh black woman into the mm. oil and gas industry in my country and when i get, went into the industry i went with uh, already excuses on how you know I, i was going to fail and things were not going really right but as soon as i shifted my my you know my fault yes, to so say much. i am here god sent me here so it means that i'm capable so that's exactly. when things started to shift and and uh, and it is important to have the right mindset in every uh you know every single situation exactly. and every single uh you know. so we gotta have a break and uh, listen to some of you know people that you you know you've been working with and we really you know are really thankful and grateful for you know for what you've done for them so don't go anywhere we're gonna start with uh, someone that you know very well medio 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 it is an honor to be in the building once again medio i would like to thank you for all the support the support to the magazine, the support to the She Exists. And now you have my consultant, the iconic global influencer, John Blassingame on your platform. What an exciting time like this. I tell you, John, I am inspired, inspired by your leadership, your mentorship, and you have done some remarkable, dynamic, incredible things, and you left nothing on the table from producer to media to global outreach, name it. You have left your doors open for our community, for our culture. You've never turned your back on our culture. And I thank you for that. I'm giving you your flowers. 
You are an amazing influencer. You inspire the young generation, the young talent. Anyone that comes underneath you, they prosper, they jump in their talent, they find their niche, and they are somebody. From the celebrity judge to the Will Packers to the Vivica Fox, we can go on to the film producers. You've done it all. You've sat in this seat. You've cultivated. You've inspired. You've empowered. And you never closed your door. You've created a space. New Day Associate. And you wanted to see and you are doing. You want to see everybody win. And I thank you for that. I am honored. I've known you 20 years. I'm just a little bit different, if you will. 20 years, we've known each other. So our relationship comes besides business. But I'm honored to have you as my consultant, my mentor, my leader to guide the way. I'm amongst the Sheen Magazine, the Upscale, Hype Magazine. It's an honor to be amongst the elite. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who would have known? I called you that day and I asked you, what do you think? And you said, send me the mock-up. And I did that after hesitating for about three months and I finally did it. And I went to New Jersey and you took me around the corner and you introduced this amazing magazine to the world. Thank you so much. We're going on our third issue. Our percentage and our numbers are up. Our promotions are up. Our first edition did volumes because we all supported each other. We all support the cause. And I close with this. Medio, back to our first conversation and you've emailed me my certificate. But I close with this, support. We have to support each other on so much other levels. And you and I are doing that from Australia to the United States. And John, I'm excited that you're a part of this whole global change because we need the publications over into the other countries and into the other countries and countries where we can't go. But this is why we partner up with the Queen, Mediel, to bring change and movements and bring the educational piece. We have to do so much more with our platforms. We have to do so much more with our voices. Our voice has to be the change because no one else is going to do it for us. The world doesn't owe us anything, but we owe it to the world to leave nothing on the table. I am sitting here honored, excited, want to pull my wig off because we understand that meaning. Mediel, John, and myself understand do not leave nothing on the table. Love you, icon, Mr. Blasting Game. I am giving you your flowers and you have so much more to receive. So we are back, we are back with John. And as you can see from, you know, Janelle uh, video, uh, that we so know nice. that John is making an impact in, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of life. And yes, yes. Uh, and I, that was wonderful. Sometimes it's not visible wonderful. because, you know, because it's something that needs to be acknowledged. And I'm happy that, you know, uh, Janelle is there and if she is, you know, uh, working with you. And one thing that I want to ask you, because, I mean, you've, see, you've seen it all, you know, starting in the fashion industry and in the media industry. What have you seen, you know, that have changed? Uh, is it easier for, you know, minorities or pe people like us to, to be able to, to make it in the industry what are the key things how are you helping those you know those newcomers to be able to break through well with my 43 years of experience and knowing uh and working in the industry knowing how to get things done who to go to what the uh, procedure is 
uh, to get a new publication out there. Well, first of all, I want to say this, that with the social media and online uh, situations happening, we're dealing with a new group of um, uh, and a new mentality. Um, today, the young folks have that uh, the iPhone, uh, uh, the other, the other, what's it, Andrea or whatever, uh, and that's what they mm -hmm. use today. Uh, yeah, it has changed. It it has changed tremendously, uh, and the change has come with regard to. Uh, the print media, okay? It's no longer uh, mm -hmm. uh, needed as much as it's needed. When we, when I was working with Cos, give me, give me an example. When I was working with Cosmopolitan magazine back in the day, okay, they were putting out close to 2 million copies per issue, okay? Uh, today, if they put out uh, 400,000 and sell 200,000 today, it's a lot of copies. That has changed because the young folks today, they now are online, TikTok and all the other wistful things where they can get immediate, immediate gratification rather than mm -hmm. deal with waiting a month later to get that information. If you're monthly or quarterly, waiting three months to get that information. Or if you're an annual, it's a, 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 a once a year to get information. They need, they are now getting immediate gratification and that's what they look for now. They want to know right away. They don't want to wait. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there's a different, there, there is a, a silver lining to uh, the whole situation. We still have print media. We now have the Barnes and Nobles. We have the bookstores that we, we, we sell to. We have the terminal accounts, the airports, the train stations, all right? That when people are traveling, they pick up because they have time now. They're on a plane, they're on a train, the transit, all right? They go to CVS, they go to the, the supermarket, they pick up copies, all right? They're not no longer picking up, up on the local newsstand and et cetera. And these are folks that are a little older than 19 and 20 and, and, uh, and no, those age groups now, you know. But it's still, print media is still there for us. And it will always be there, I say, mm -hmm. okay? It's just a change of the mentality of the youth today. They want immediate gratification. So they're on, they're online. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I think that's something that we can see across the globe. I mean, this new generation just wanting mm -hmm. immediate thing. And it, it comes, you know, because of the digital, you know, the, the digital. The digital, uh, exactly. You know, um, life. Yeah. So they used to, they, they were born with the digital, I mean, they just have to push a button and then things just happen. It and so they're expecting everything to be, you know, immediate. that way. Exactly. I mean, it can be very deceiving. So, uh, yeah, it's an immediate gratification. So how do you deal with that? Because, you know, you, you've been working with, you know, quite a lot of, you know, young, uh, young talents. Uh, so obviously they come with this mentality. And how do you help them shift? Because as you as you said, it's, you know, now it's more about, you know, being very strategic and, and being, you know, patient more than having the immediate gratification, especially if they want to sustain, you know, that sustain exactly, but, in their businesses yes. or sustain their career. You deal with that. Well, let me tell I'm gonna start out with the uh, with uh, dealing with the young models, designers and hairstylists and makeup people today years ago when i first started out and i told you you know when i first did it in 1976 we had a very very eager group of young models designers but they were willing to put their time in they were willing to give time to get that opportunity 
today, the young folks today, they don't want to wait. They want immediate, gra oh, well, if, you know, if I can't get it now, I don't want it. I, you know, I'll go out on my own. I'm online. I have 50,000 people that are, that are my followers. I've made it already. Okay. The attitude mm -hmm. of the young folks have changed over the years. They don't want to put any time in. Mm -hmm. Only thing they want is what you can do for them. Not what they can do to help you get their careers together, mm -hmm. but what you can do for them. If, if they don't feel you can do anything to help them, okay, they, they don't give you the time, okay? Even though, mm -hmm. if you look at it, you have 50,000 people, but it's not making you any money. It's not growing you any. You're mm -hmm. still in the position that you are right now, okay? So that false <laughs> impression that you've made it is what you're dealing with today with these young folks, mm -hmm. okay? They don't feel that they have to give you a time. Yeah, and I say that from a perspective of living life with these young folks and seeing them you know how they how they are growing in the society because they're not seeing the full picture of in terms of what life has to offer and that is okay uh you look at what's going on okay the system is for uh, is presenting to you a false presentation of life mm -hmm. you have to learn to be and to look on your own don't let the system present to you something that's not real mm -hmm. okay that's what's happening today young folks are seeing things but they're not looking deep enough to see the reality of what they're looking at mm -hmm. okay that's what we that's what we're up against today. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. to you know and I I preach to them. Look, I tell them, look, you have to be almost like an independent person. You can't take things at face value. Do your due diligence, do homework. All right? See things or seek to see things as they really are. Not as some folks pretend it and present it to you. This is what we have to, rea the reality of life today. And that is, do your due diligence, find out what's going on. Try to get on the inside of what is, understanding what you, who you are, because mm -hmm. know yourself and know how the, how the system looks at you you can accomplish more by knowing who you are and dealing with the system from that perspective of knowing who you are, but still you have to deal with them. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're very powerful. I mean, just what you shared, because sometimes we forget that it all starts with us. It starts mm -hmm. inside of us. So if we don't know who we are, how can we, you know, how can we show up the right way Exactly. And that's, uh, that's important to have this introspection, understand who we are. And uh, you, you also shared at the beginning, having, you know, living a, a purpose driven life, not mm. just, you know, a life that, you know, uh, you know, fit into an agenda that mm -hmm. is presented to us. And we just follow because it's, uh, it's shining. And then by the time we realize, it is, uh, you know, be yeah. after the shine doesn't last. It's hey, just, all that glitter is not gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So it is, uh, it is something that uh, that needs, to, uh, and I hope that you know, uh, obviously, people, the, especially the youngster, because I have quite a lot of young entrepreneurs who are gonna watch this, that they're gonna take this advice because it is a yeah, very it, important it, advice as we, yeah. need, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially, I want to say, I want to say this. So much yeah. happening, yeah. I want to, I want to so, so, so say this in the music industry. You know, back back when we 
you know, had all these stars and music industry. They had folks that just wanted to make music. They did mm -hmm. not do their due diligence to find out the, uh, the back room information mm -hmm. of owning your own music, of knowing how to do the masters and et cetera. All they knew, hey, I'm enjoying this music. I'm. This is what I had planned on doing, was getting the music out there. You know, I got to start them. But the people in the back was making all the money. Mm -hmm. They did not do their homework to study. Okay, hey, I'm, I, I don't own the masters to this. I don't own this, the rights, you know. You have to go and find out mm -hmm. what the true way of and the true procedures of what you what you're into, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's in our and that's in our own economy today. We're one point three trillion dollars uh, uh, economy, but we are consumers. We own nothing. Mm -hmm. When are we going to start seeing? like all the other nationalities, to mm -hmm. own your own is to be in control. If you don't own your own, you're being controlled and you're being manipulated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you basically fit into some, someone else's agenda and that's, uh, exactly. Thank that's you. a pity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a pity. That's, so let's have another testimony and then we'll, uh, we'll continue continue this conversation uh, uh, and you know for those watching us don't go anywhere we will be back in a few minutes happy thanksgiving i wanted to give a special thank you to mr john blessing game for your kindness just your generosity just everything that you pour into me in my career, my life, my, ch my the life of my children. Thank you, sir, so much for everything you do for the industry, for everything you do for your community. You are so loved. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So another testimony for we are back. We are back with, uh, with John. And uh, as you could, you know, uh, if you just joining us, uh, John is one of the legend in the fashion and uh, fashion industry and in the media in the US is based in New Jersey. And you can read all about him and, you know, see the impact and the legacy that is, you know, is living. And we are talking about his legendary journey today. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, John, and uh, I know that you, you know, you, you're working, you've been working on this legacy for, you know, for a long time now. Is, you know, what do you think is really important right now, you know, for, especially for the community, the black community, as we, uh, you know, as we still battling, you know, and, and it's happening everywhere. What, what do you think is still important to, uh, for us to learn from, or what are the things that we're missing, you know, in everything that we do that actually don't help us to sustain, you know, have a sustainable economy, black economy, I would say, and we especially, have to save, you know, uh, yeah. in, in the fashion and media industry. Okay, we have to save the children, save the babies, because that's the future, okay? We have to learn to teach teach to reach and teach our mm -hmm. youth today show them i have a grandson and every day i talk with him okay i talk with him i explain to him what life is about and some of the things don't be a follower be a leader you know start now mm -hmm. to look at life from a perspective of Hey, if I'm making this much money a, a year or a week, I should save this much. All right. If I want something out of life, I have to be in control of myself. I can't let anyone control mm -hmm. my destiny but me. I think that 
Our problem is that we're being manipulated and controlled in our community. Mm-hmm. We don't have control over ourselves. All right. That's our future mm-hmm. must be to learn how to, uh, to control our own economy. Mm-hmm. That's what we have. That's, that's my thoughts and all I say and do to everyone that I, t- I come in contact with is if you're not in control, you're being controlled. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's okay. an important question to ask ourselves: Are we in control, or are we control? And uh, being, it yeah. comes down to knowing who we are again, you know, uh, and and how and how we relate to what's happening around us. Because if we don't know who we are, we don't really know if we are control or not. Mm-hmm. Which oh, uh, just we are a power. following the we are, flow, are, we are. and that's it, you know, because yeah. we think we that's. Are. that's actually what we we want yes mm-hmm. we are that's a really what we want and group of people we are powerful mm-hmm. let's see. learn your history learn mm-hmm. your history learn who you are and what you where you come from that's the beginning mm-hmm. don't let someone else tell you who you are because they only tell you who you are because they want to manipulate you and control you Mm-hmm. If I'm being told I've, I've come for nothing, I start believing it. And that's what I believe, then I become nothing. Mm-hmm. But if I learn my history and see how much I have contributed to society, okay, I feel better about myself. The more you know, the more you know that you don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay. The more that you is, know, the more know that you don't know. I love it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's what we have to start learning. We have to start giving more time to finding out who we are. Not who we're told we are, but who we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's exactly what we were talking about, you know, the, the young generation not taking the time because they want everything just immediate you know, gratification. Straight away. Exactly. And uh, they basically, you know, take any story the same way, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the same attitude when it comes down to understand who they are. They just take the first, you know, story that comes to them, that is given to them and this they think that that's who they are and that's an important step to, to, and it's important that, you know, people like you, you know, share, you know, and, and people listen to people like you because mm-hmm. you have, you know, you've, you've had the experience and you have the stories as well that, you mm-hmm. know, the young generation can actually build on and, and, uh, and, and really build on to know who they are and, and have a purpose in their life mm-hmm. because if they don't purpose they're full for anything and that's uh that's a shame so we're gonna have another another video and then we'll come back to conclude on uh, on this you know amazing conversation full of inspiration and uh, and i hope just you know hope again that uh, whoever is going to listen to this uh, not only share it in your community because there's a, a strong message here i mean you you could hear all the you know the different the different messages that uh, John you know sent to us, but also you know make sure you take notes and you start looking at your life and implementing. We're talking about knowing who you are. You know, start to ask yourself, do you really know who you are, and and are you really in control of your life? And that's uh, that's a key question. But before we get there. Just, you know, we're just going to have another break and we'll be back for the last part of the show.
myself to say, Mr. Black and you have been such an inspiration during my whole model career and the opportunity has brought me like the competition. I wouldn't have been able to compete and be in the competition without his help and I am so thankful for that. So we are back, we are back with John and it is just amazing, you know, the impact you could see from all the testimony, the impact that John has on, you know, everyone's life, especially in the fashion and in the, in the media industry. And uh, we really value uh, all, you know, all his, uh, his input, we value his, his uh, wisdom, we value, we're so blessed to have him, you know, as, uh, as someone who is in our community and someone who is, you know, building up, you know, all of us. So, uh, John, you know, there's, there's one question that I really like to, you know, to ask, uh, all my guests and especially you, because you know, you've been going on like, you know, for years, 43 years in, in, in the fashion and media industry. So what's, what's up, you know, what's left because you know, you're not stopping. And uh, so what is the, what is more in this legacy that you want to leave? You know, let me say this, as I said earlier, you know, we live a purpose-driven life. And God has a purpose for me being here. You know, I might not know it immediately, okay, but God knows it. And he knows why I'm here. So I let go and let God tell me what's next. Mm -hmm. I know that there are young folks that I have to touch to let them know what's happening in the world today and what pitfalls to look, look out for. I say that to young folks every day. I mean, I get phone calls. Hey, Mr. Blassigan, what do you think about this? Hey, Mr. Blassigan, can you help me with this? Hey, what's your opinion on this, Mr. Black? You know, what's next is this, this same thing I get calls every day for, trying to help. But, you know, we live a service-driven life. We're here to serve. That's God's purpose for having us here, to serve. Okay? I, I do the best I can. I try not to let people take advantage of my kindness and, and do the right thing by them. But, you know, this is what I do every day. Someone is calling me and asking me, and I drew the best I can from my knowledge and understanding. I give them the wisdom that I have acquired over the years, okay, to avoid the pitfalls. 
that, that and and I've been through pitfalls now. That you know, uh, I I had situations that happened, and I've learned from them. I always say that: learn mm -hmm. from your mistakes. Then it wasn't a mistake because you got something out of it. That's what I and my so. Mm -hmm. My my uh, my continuation on life is to try and help someone else along the way. Then my life would not have been in vain. That's me. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. It has been a blessing. And I think, you know, that's that's what we, we get from those who are watching. There's Sabrina. It's a pleasure to listen to this interview. And uh, she's saying that you are a true blessing. And we also have Erica. Uh, this was amazing to watch. Well deserved. Yes, this was a real hour of, you know, greatness. And that's what this show is all about. You know, we bring you the legend today is a legend that we, we we had on this platform and i hope that you've learned you've learned and you you gotta take on you know all this wisdom mm -hmm. and do something with it because you know like uh, like john himself said you know we are here to serve so he's giving you something you know that you know of service and then you do also something with it don't you know don't amen. let it die amen don't shove it in your you know in 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 your cupboard share and act you know because uh we've talked about uh you know being in control of your own life that's what it's all about you know be in control of your own life get inside know who you are know your story and serve serve you know people in your community serve people wherever there's a need and uh, and and let go because sometimes we want to uh we, we really want to manage everything let go and let god you know do the rest that's uh, that's that's been a powerful conversation but before we leave john i just wanted to ask uh, how do people uh, get in contact with you if they want to continue to get this wisdom because I definitely encourage them to, you know, <laughs> to continue. Yeah, Learn well, from you. On, you know, mm -hmm. I'm let well, on my like that. <laughs> yeah, well, on my I have Instagram which is New Day N E W D A Y Associates. It's all one word, mm -hmm. New Day. N e w d a y associates. That's one worry mm -hmm. uh, way. I am on Facebook under John Blasting Game New Day, uh, and they can also contact. We're we're redoing my website, so it'll be up in mm -hmm. a short while. But uh, they can also contact me uh, by by phone. My office number and my line to get in touch with me by phone. Which is the old way, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we understand, but uh... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all right. But uh, it's 609-655-3667. Okay. You can always contact me there, but Instagram, you can always leave me a message. And on Facebook, you can mm -hmm. always leave me a message. And I will respond. I I will respond to all my messages. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely look forward to. And by the way, we're having our international show coming up May 13th and 14th, where we send the model to Paris, France, male and female, and a fashion spread. And Jean Upscale, or she exists, along with Black Link Magazine, okay, uh, the, a fashion spread in these publications. Mm -hmm. Also, we are doing our international, our international uh, full figure model, okay? And uh, we will be interviewing uh, for those, the, the full figure model will receive a trip to Cancun, Mexico, and a cover for Size Overrated magazine, okay? So these are opportunities here, okay? And the event is called the Mother's Day Fashion Weekend 
May 13th and 14th. If you have more, uh, for more information, they can also go to Facebook, Instagram, or contact that 609-655-3667 number. All right. Mm -hmm. We will be casting, by the way, for the last thing here. On December mm -hmm. the 18th, 2022, at the Marriott Hotel at Newark International Airport, uh, we asked all models to wear all black, female to bring heel, male flat shoes. And uh, so, uh, as I said, they can contact us, and uh, we're here to serve John Blasting Game. Fantastic, John. Thank you for gracing the, uh, the the Greatness Engineering Hour show. It is, you know, it has been a pleasure. And now I know why I was excited before this show because I got, you know, all the, the your wisdom and I'm really going to grab it with my two hands, share and everything that I've learned today, but also apply it in my own life as I go along and journey through, you know, through life and uh, with all the challenges that are, that are gonna go, you know, come through. But as I learned today, it's about the mindset. And if I have the right mindset and I know where I come from and I know my story, exactly. I know who I exactly. am. Exactly. Those obstacles are actually learnings and they're actually helping me to get to where I really want to be. So thank you so much for that. Well, thank you it for inviting me. It's been a me. pleasure to have you. Thank you for your time, to one hour of your time. It's yeah, been my, it's, it, uh, that, it I, has been a real pleasure. So it, I, will, I will be in touch anyway. And, uh, thank and, you. And, and really, you know, get continue to get some wisdom. <laughs> um, it's been my pleasure. I assure you, I want to thank you for inviting me. Thanks, Janelle, for putting us together. And it's just been a wonderful, wonderful hour of enjoyment. It's been a wonderful hour. Again, thank you for inviting me. Thank and you. Janelle Harris for putting us together from uh, uh, She Exists Magazine for putting us together. Fantastic. It has mm -hmm. been worth it, and uh, and and I, I'm really appreciate. So thank you to Janelle, and she exists is supporting this show as well. So it is you know it is a, a great collaboration, and uh, we are building up every single day. So thank you on. Uh, uh, on on Sunday and on Sunday, I'm gonna have Janelle here with me. And on Monday, I'm gonna have two shows in the morning. I'm gonna have uh, my my dear friend uh, Lucy Newcomb all the way from uh, California. And in the afternoon, we're gonna hear about you know. Uh, um, a, a young lady who is um, we, we were in South Africa. So she is the daughter of one of my friends as well. And she, uh, you know, she's going to talk about her journey to Antarctica. And so there's a lot coming up. I thank you all for being with us today. And again, I hope that you going to do something with what was shared today by John. I hope that you got to share, please share this conversation. It is important for us and for, you know, a part of the greatness engineering movement. So thank you very much. And I see you on Sunday.
episode of the Greatness Engineering Hour show, the show that is brought to you by the Virai Telekima Global Leadership Organization. What real is important is if you just look at the word compassion, when it's behavior, it's something that can be learned and it is something that we can embody through habits and through our daily actions. To get this idea that if we interject this wisdom intentionally, mm-hmm. uh, it is, it, I call them needle movers. It's the needle mover that's missing. Um.